ESP controllers from Espressive are very popular these days for IT-based designs. The most popular ESP boards are ESP826601 and esp 826612 e These boards are the very popular among makers, designers, and IT enthusiasts. The ready-made plug and play board is already available in the market, but the problem with this board is they are very big in size and has power-hungry voltage regulators that may not be suitable for compact and low-power project. This is why it is necessary to design your own ESP board for battery-powered IoT applications. In this tutorial, we will learn how to design a circuit and a compact PCB for using the ESP8266 controller. We will use the low-power LDO instead of voltage regulators and add some battery charging and battery management feature to the board. We will not use any USB to UART chip like CP2102, rather we will program the device using external FTDI. By removing the extra chips and using the low power, LDOs will reduce the power consumption and makes the device small sized. Thus, the device can operate with a small lithium ion battery and charge either using ESP or solar power. You can also use ESP8285 as an alternative and most of the points discussed here will still be the same. Watch this video till the end as it will be very very interesting. For now, without getting any delay, let's get started. The PCV board used in this project is sponsored by Next PCV. Next PCV offers totally free PCV prototypes, which means you can get 10 PCVs of 1 to 4 years without any cost. There is no PCV cost or shipping fee. You can upload the Gerber file directly and fill in the PCV details like quantity, color, and thickness. Then select your country for shipment and place an order. It's totally for free. And there is an exciting offer for new registers as you can get $100 coupon if you sign up using the link in the description. There are the different versions of ESP chips which is a miniature Wi-Fi module present in the market. It is used for establishing a wireless network connection for a microcontroller or a processor. It features the ability to embed Wi-Fi capabilities to systems or to function as a standalone application. Its operating frequency is same as Wi-Fi of 2.4 GHz and it operates at 3.3 V only so it does not supply anything above that. The power consumption of this module is a little higher due to Wi-Fi capability, hence operating with a battery might be a challenge. It has several GPIO pins as well as single ADC channel which can be used for your IoT project. Now let's just go to the designing part. Here is the schematic of the complete board of this project. Let's start from battery charging part. It uses a micro USB cable to charge a lithium ion battery. The MCP73821 battery management integrated circuit is best for battery charging and protection. A LED here turns on when the battery is charging. A simple 2 pin battery connector here is used for connecting the lithium ion battery directly to the circuit. A slide switch is used for power on off or to disconnect the battery. And to step down the battery voltage to 3.3 volt, we are using a low power LDO called SD7333 from Haltech. It is highly efficient and better than AM1117 as the dropout voltage is only 170 millivolt. This OLED display connects to ESP8266 chip through i 2 c pins. The display is optional. You may not require this for your IoT project. And then we have the main ESP8266 circuit which has so many pull-up resistors for a few capacitors and transistors. There is no need for manual programming or pressing and releasing the push button. The programming process is automatic and handled by two switches FLS and RST, two transistors Q1 and Q2 and a few other components. The RST signal is used for resetting while the DDR signal is used for putting the chip in flash mode. You can program the chip directly using the USB to DTL module or the FTDI module with the help of program pulse input pin here. The GPIO output pins here are input output 4, input output 5, input output 12, 13, 14, 16. All the pins are digital pins and out of them input output 4 and 5 are the I2C pins. The header H1 in the circuit is used for the power supply. Out of them, three pins are the VCC and the other three are the ground pins. I converted the schematic into PCV and arranged the components in such a way that all are lined up properly on the board. Then I routed the transmission lines so that multiple layer PCV can be created. So here is the 3D view of the PCV. I have placed the main components on the top side as including the ESP8266 chip. 
On the back side, I placed LDO and battery charging module. An OLED display can also be soldered here. I placed the PCV order from next PCV and received the PCV within a week. The PCV quality looks so great. Look at the top layer with gold bladed connector and very shiny surface. Even the through hole part is properly managed. Similarly, the bottom part of the PCV also looks great. Now, all you need to do is collect the components using the bill of materials on our website and try soldering all the SMD and TST components on the PCV board. So, I assembled all the components on the PCV board. The ESP8266 chip is properly soldered. The two push button along with the two transistors also looks promising. All the SMD components with 0805 package are properly soldered here. And now you can turn on or off the device using this slide switch. Here a battery can also be connected to this connector. These are the GPIO pins for external sensor connections. These are 3.3 volt and ground pin for external sensors. Charge the battery through this USB connector. And at the back side, the resistors and capacitors are properly assembled including the battery charging integrated circuit. There was a little design problem for LDO SD7333 so I modified the final circuit. These headers are for automatic flashing of the firmware. To power on the module, I will use 3.7 volt 500 lithium ion battery. Simply connect it to the PCV. Now I want to test the battery charging. For that, connect a micro USB cable to the PCV. When you slide the power switch, the blue LED on the ESP8266 chip will blink indicating the module is working fine. Here is an FTDI module or a USB to TDI converter module. I'll use this for programming the board. Connect the VCC, GND, TX, RX, DTR and also the RTS pin as indicated on the board. Then connect the USB cable to the computer USB. So the LED on the FTDI and also on the PCV will turn on. Now let's test the board first. To do that, open the Arduino IDE. From tools, select the generic ESP8266 module. Leave all the settings the same. Also select the COM port. From example, open the blink sketch and upload the code to the ESP8266 board. Once the code is uploaded, you can check the ESP8266 customized board. The lead will blink after the set interval. So this indicates our PCV is working fine and this can be used for all IoT projects. Now let's see the second code. This code is used for measuring the voltage or battery percentage. As explained in the design part, ESP8266 chip ADC ranges from 0 to 1 volt. So a voltage divider network needs to be created for stepping down the battery voltage from 4.2 volt to 1 volt. The voltage is measured through ADC pins and the sample code can be found on the website article. After uploading the code, the serial monitor will show you the ADC value along with battery voltage and also the battery percentage. This is just like measuring the amount of fuel left in the battery. So in order to verify the serial monitor value along with the real battery value, you can use the multimeter to measure the battery voltage. This is the third example. Here we will be creating a web server. For this, we will use the DHT11 sensor along with the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library. From this code, change the Wi-Fi SSID and password. The data of humidity and temperature is read by the sensor and then transmitted to a static base. All you need is to connect the digital pin of DHT11 to ESP8266 GPIO12 pin. Connect VCC to 3.3V and ZND to ZND. Now upload the code. After the code is uploaded, the ESP8266 will try connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Once connected, it will generate a local IP address. You can now copy the IP address and open your web browser. Paste the IP address here and hit enter. You can see a web server created with the value of temperature and humidity displayed. So all the details written guide related to this project can be found in the website article of How to Electronics. You can find the bill of materials, schematic, specific file, source code program and other instructions here. 
I hope you like this video so why not drop a like and hit subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.